pastors are just dying in the church. Pastors are dying. Ministers are dying. Deacons are dying. You just hear that that beautiful brother, that's beautiful sister, that's committed sister brother, they just passed on. Sick, falling sick every day. The question is, has God stopped healing people? Is the blood of Jesus no more working today? What is going on? The Spirit of God began to nudge me and reveal to me that there is a foundation that many of us are not laying at, paying attention to. That with this foundation, you can lay hold on your divine healing. And this is what we are looking into today. What is this foundation in your life as a believer that you can engage to receive your divine healing? I don't want you to die of that sickness, my friend. Don't die of that sickness. Don't die of that oppression. Lay hold on the foundation you have in Christ Jesus and receive your divine healing. What is this foundation? This is what we are going to be looking into today, everybody. This is God's favor. It's a blessing. Our God is good and his mercy is endures forevermore. Amen. And Pastor Tomo. And I say you are welcome today to the this edition of the church in the air. This is a church without walls and borders, setting men up with God for a glorious turnaround. And we are super excited to be here today. Today is our healing school, and we are live looking at engaging foundation for divine healing. The foundation that is in your life in Christ Jesus. Many of us, we don't pay attention to that powerful virtue to lay claim on our divine healing. However, I pray for you today that in this meeting today, you will lay hold on that foundation in your life to claim your divine healing in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. I don't want you to doubt that sickness. No, my friend, I don't want you to doubt that oppression. And that is what we are going to be looking into today. However, as our practice, we are going to say a simple prayer. The anointing for faith and gift of healing and working of miracles upon this life here. And as we minister in this place today, there shall be a manifestation. I want you to say this prayer just for a short few seconds. That God, as I connect to this meeting today, let me encounter my divine visitation. Whatever is your divine visitation, is it healing you want? Is it deliverance you want? Is it breakthrough you want? Whatever it is, this is healing school. Ask that God, as I connect to this meeting today, let me encounter my divine visitation. Turn it into prayer, my friend. Marada Shotoba Kradeshan Terida. That as you connect to this meeting today, you will receive your divine visitation. As you connect to this meeting today, you will receive your divine encounter. As you connect to this meeting today, God will meet you at your point of need. So shall it be in the mighty name of Yeshua. Hamashiach. Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And so, Father, we commit this meeting to you. We thank you because you are God. We thank you because you are faithful. We thank you because you are awesome. We thank you for your hand upon this meeting today. Let there be visitation today. Let there be healing for somebody. Let there be deliverance for somebody. Let there be divine breakthrough for somebody. We take authority over every forces. All authority is given to our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven and on earth. And by faith, I have this authority. I have authority to be, authority to have, and authority to do. I have dominion over the forces of darkness. I therefore declare that Jesus is Lord over this territory. Concerning this meeting today, we declare that Jesus is Lord. In this meeting today, we declare that Jesus is Lord. The healing balm is released in this meeting today. There shall be divine visitation. There shall be divine healing today. There shall be a change of story today. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. This is the Church in the Air, a church without wall and border, setting men up with God for a glorious turnaround. Praise the Lord. Thank you one more time for joining us for today's program. And today we are looking at engaging your foundation for divine healing. This is Healing School. 
where we learned basically the things that has to do with our divine healing. And my prayer is that you will encounter your own healing in the name of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, speak to me in this meeting today. Give me insight and revelation. And later, we're going to take some time to pray because the anointing for healing is upon this meeting. And you are going to be healed of that sickness in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Engaging your foundation for divine healing. What are, the, what are some of the basic foundation we have in Christ Jesus? One of them is that our sins are forgiven us. By the, scribe of, by the blood of Jesus Christ, pay fully for our sins. We are new creature. We are, we, Christ is our inheritance. Many of, times, many of us know this thing for sure. That, was why, that is why you are a believer. However, we left it at the salvation junction. Yes, yeah, Jesus Christ has paid for my sin. Praise the Lord. But now when sickness comes, you are like, it has nothing to do with that. I was already born again. And that is why you see pastors dying of sickness, of cancer. You see that committed dickin, dickiness, that lovely brother. I mean, everybody have them now. I just said about another news. That brother has just died. Oh, that sister, beautiful sister in the church, just pass on. It ought not to be so. There is a bam in Gilead. I pray for somebody today that in this meeting you will receive your divine visitation. In this meeting, you will receive change of story. In this meeting, God will turn your life around in the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God began to talk to me. I was recently. Some, not too very long ago, I was faced with some monstrous opposition, oppression rather. I saw opposition. It was not submitting. I rebuke it with no bow. I judge it with no bow. I cast down it with no bow. I was praying, God, I look, where did I open the door? God, help me. And then I reached out to our Lord. I began to pray in the Spirit. There's a power in praying in the Spirit because when you pray in the Holy Ghost, what you don't understand physically, Holy Spirit will help you interpret and fix for you. So remember that. So I began to pray in the Spirit. Then from my heart, the Spirit of God began to talk to me. He said, why not lay hold on your foundation? I said, what is my foundation? What I was thinking is, okay, maybe the idolatry in my father's house, the witchcraft in my mother's house. What is my foundation? Then the Spirit of God asked me, what is your foundation? And I said, hold on a second. My sins are forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. He asked me again, what is your foundation? I said, I'm new in Christ. I'm, I have the newness in Christ Jesus. He said, what is your foundation, daughter? I said, I'm, I, Jesus Christ is my substitute, my sacrifice, and my inheritance. He said, engage your foundation. And I started to face that opposition, that monster, monster oppression. I said, my sins are forgiven me. And I, as I began to lay hold on that, initially it was looking as it was not budging, but I understand the, the journey. I understand the terrain. So I stood there that my sins are forgiven me. And before you know it, it comes coming down. The Spirit of God says I should share that with you today. Lay engaging divine, your foundation for divine healing. I see so many love people that have died today that they don't need to die. But lack of understanding of the resources available for them. They just sheepishly just go to heaven prematurely. Don't go to heaven too, too early. We need you on this earth. So that is why you lay, pay attention to what we are sharing today. This is healing school. The mercy of God will prevail for you. So look at we're looking out of all this foundation, we're going to just speak on only one. There are several foundations you have as believer. There are several foundations you have as believer. And the question is one, your sins are forgiven you. You are a new creature. Physically, you may not look like it. Your background name may not change when you give your life to Jesus. Your mental acumen, okay, the schools you went to, your certificate may not change. But the fact is you are changing the spirit. So many a times they will want to deceive you with, you know, things that are not, you have to enforce on that. And then that Jesus is your inheritance. However, today we are going to lay emphasis on one of them, that your sins are forgiven you. 
forgiveness of sin. Every oppression has an anchor it is holding on to in your life. I want you to pay attention to this truth, my friend. That every oppression, every sickness, every stagnation, every lack, every pain, every not enough, anything that is not working in your life is actually from the darkness. And darkness cannot just operate where light is. There must be an affinity that is holding on to. There is an anchor that oppression is holding on to in your life. It doesn't matter if you're a minister of the gospel. That sickness is holding on to some anchor in your life, some dark anchor, some sin anchor. And that is why this foundation is so important for your divine visitation, for your healing. I have a prayer for somebody that the almighty God will visit you today. The hand of God will change your life from glory to glory. You will receive that healing today in the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. Let's, in the book of Isaiah chapter 22, verse 25, Isaiah chapter 22, verse 25, the Bible says that, and the peg that is fasting to a secure place shall be removed. The peg, I read that now, Isaiah chapter 22, verse 25, Thank you, Jesus. And the peg. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, the peg that is fasting in the secure place will be removed and be cut down and fall. And the burden that was upon it will be cut off for the Lord has spoken. That anchor, you know what is an anchor like in the ship before if they want to dock a ship or a yak, you know, they have this anchor, tiny but studded, you know, instrument that they will put into deck to secure in a secure place. And with that, no matter how big the ship is, it will not swerve away. The same way there is an anchor that the enemy, that sickness is holding on to in your life. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that this, this, this peg, this anchor that is fasting to that secure place, that sickness that is fasting to that secure place in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you today that today is removed in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that today it is cut down. Today that, that peg is broken down and the burden upon it, that pain, that inconvenience, that oppression, the Bible says, cut down for the Lord has spoken it. That is your portion today in the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Let's move on. You want to say, okay, okay, yes, yes. So what are these anchors? What are some of the examples of the anchor that the enemy uses to afflict sickness? You must know that. It doesn't matter. Oh, I didn't commit anything. Think very well. If you have any oppression in your life, it is of darkness. So there is a darkness anchor that is holding on to in your life. What are some of the examples of this anchor in your life in that enemy uses to afflict people? One of them is ignorant. That's the top of the list. Lack of understanding, number one, of your right in Christ Jesus. Devil always take advantage of that to perfect people. If you don't know that you're, you are being healed by the stripe of Jesus, if you don't receive it, in our, in our healing school, we have this, you may check on our playlist in this school, we have this message, five foundational truths on divine healing. One of them is that it is the will of God to heal you. Number two, Jesus has fully paid for your sins. Fully. Before he was born, you were born. So it's not like, will Jesus heal me or not? He has said to that. Number three, it is your responsibility to create the atmosphere that God will manifest through. Because healing, sound head operates in light, not in darkness. So you must create that atmosphere. Number four, man has a will to choose. You must consciously choose sound health for it to operate in your life. And then number five, five man have authority. Believers have authority over the forces of darkness. So you can rebuke the devil. With debt on that, you can look at it for your, for your blessing. Praise the Lord. Now, today we are looking at engaging your foundation for divine healing. And we are pestling into what is that foundation? We are looking at the foundation of your sins forgiving you. 
Now, we say that every sickness, every oppression, every lack has an anchor, a root to one anchor in your life. Anchor of sin. What are the examples of this sin? Number one is the ignorance. If you don't know who you are in Christ, devil will advantage, take advantage. It's also on, on ignorance of how spirituality operates. Another one is disobedient. Very important. This one is so common with ministers and people that have been in God. God said that do this thing and you don't do it. That disobedience can open the door for devil to afflict you with sickness. Or God said don't do that and you go ahead to do it. It has caused many people disobedient. It will, it, will it will make your mountain to just turn tall. You will rebuke and it will look as if nothing is happening until you repent of that. Another of the sin is be funny. Today in the world, everybody has many things that are not working for them. Ain't it? Everybody, you know, the, if it's not the system, if it's not the at your workplace, you know, your neighborhood, something is not working. So many people are on the edge. People are bitter. And that is why many people are oppressing other people. So many people are on that stage of bitterness. If you go on the church media, people are just hang angry. And many people are resentful towards God. Why did God allow that? Have been in church all this while. Why is the like that? That bitterness opened the door for sickness to come in. Another one is unforgiveness. This one, as a minister, I've seen it again, again, and again play out in, in sickness in people. If you know what that guy did to me, devil will set up strife against you. It will use look the person that is most that you know. Even if if somebody on the uh, on the on the road hurts you, it doesn't really matter. But we make sure it's somebody that's so close to you, like your husband, like your wife, like your father, your mother, your sibling, your very close friend, your your somebody that they will hurt you so they can pay you. And you will say, you know what? I will never forgive him. Oh, I will never forgive her. As you are making that unbelief, un unforgiveness in your heart, that is an anchor that devil can hang on to, to cause that sickness. I was reaching out to somebody. He was on the sick bed. He was down. I said, let me help you, you know, build your faith. While he was on the sick bed, he was talking bad about his wife. I said, you got to forgive. He cut me off. I say, brother, you got to forgive your wife. If not, devil, this sickness, let anybody lay hand on you. It will not happen. Not too long ago, I tried to reach out to him. The wife said, oh, the man has gone to be with the Lord. Unforgiveness is one of the major anchors that the devil hold on to for sickness. I pray for somebody today that the hand of God will rest upon you and you'll be free from this oppression. That God will turn things around for you. In the mighty name, of Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. Another one is other sins, sexual immoralities, especially because you harass the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is your body. Any sin in your life, if you conduct sin, you know, any sin in your life, devil can hold on to all of that. But I have a good news for you today, that as you begin to say, God, I change, God change my life, Things will begin to turn for you. This is healing school. And the desire is that you receive your healing in this place today. What is the good news in this, in all of this? I know so many people that they go to let that prophet lay hand on me. Let that pastor apostle pray for me. I will be healed. And they come back, they are not healed. They are confused. Look at the details here. You cannot hold, you cannot be praying with one hand and be have bitterness and unforgiveness in another hand and expect to be healed, it will not happen. Ooh, our God is a good car. Let's just take this break shortly and then we continue. But I want you to pray that God visit me in this place.
Thank you, Jesus. That's our life coaching. In case you are interested, you may want to send us an email later on that, info at air.church. The good news, however, is that on your foundation is that your sins has forgiven you. I want you to, if there's any scripture you must know as somebody that is ill today, is Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. Also in Ephesians 1 7, all over the scripture. In whom, that's in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. This is a scripture you must know, my friend, if you are sick in your body. Don't die of that sickness. Yes, you have redemption through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of your sin. What does this translate to? Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at it. What does this translate to? Let's look at the potency. The forgiveness of our sin. Let's look at in Christ Jesus, our sins have been paid for completely, fully and wholly. Your sins has been paid for. It doesn't matter the sin. What are the kind of sins? There are inherited sin. Maybe you inherited from your parent. There are self-acquired sin. The one you did commit early. The one you forgot to repent of. And that devil know and is speaking against you. Whatever the sin we listed some of this anchor. Forgiveness of sin is a foundation that can deliver you from that sickness. Many of us don't know that. We forget about this powerful uh, virtue that Jesus has put in our hands. What do you do? You repent, number one. You confess your sin. Very important, repent of it. We have listed some of those. If I quickly show you again. Ignorant. We have uh, disobedience, bitterness, unforgiveness, and all of that. So the first thing is that you repent of them. If God has shown you that you ask for God, what, what is the anchor this sickness is holding on to in my life? And then you repent of it. Then you confess it because the Bible says only those that confess their sin that they will be forgiven. So say, Jesus, I'm sorry. Simple prayer, but has significant spiritual implication because when you confess your sin it looks so simple but the blood just come up speedily and wipe it away so that devil does not use this as an anchor to give you sickness and then you insist on the forgiveness of your sin by the blood of jesus that is the aspect many of us don't know about many believers many ministers don't pay attention to that you you yes i'm a believer that's why my sins are forgiven me no in this sickness you are going to insist that my sins are forgiven me what is the potency what is the potency of the blood of jesus christ concerning this matter why this foundation for your divine healing let's look at hebrew chapter 2 verse 2 Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. The Bible says that God in time past in various ways, he spoke to our fathers by this prophet. But in these last days, he's speaking to, our, to us by his son. He now began to describe this son. Let's look at the way he described him. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody, my friend, today's your divine healing. Things are turning around for your glory today in Jesus' name. It said that in verse two, is in verse one. It said, "Has verse two? It say, as in these last days, <clears throat> spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed here of all things, through whom also He made the world. Is the owner of everything." And everything was made through him. That is why there is nothing that he cannot alter because his hand is on everything. It's a deep revelation. Who bring the brightness of God's glory and the express image of God's person. Everything that make up God is in Christ Jesus. And he said, upholding all things by the word of his power. Hallelujah. Now let's look at this place. He said, when he had by himself purged our sin, when he has purged your sins, 
sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, and as by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than them. The potency of the blood of Jesus is that number one is the highest sacrifice possible. That's the highest sacrifice that can never be made for your sin. That's the highest sacrifice. Oh, what do I do so that I can be healed of this sickness? The blood of Jesus is the highest sacrifice. He paid fully. The second thing you must know is that it is a complete work. The Bible says, Avon purged our sin, he sat down at the right hand of God, of the majesty on high. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, was raised from dead and he seated at the right hand of the most high. And he said, We too, we are raised up with him and sat with him. He's not sitting down today because he's so tired. Oh, I forgive the sins of all mankind. Oh, I've carried the sickness of everybody that will come to this world, including the one that were not born yet. No. I'm so tired. No, he's not sitting down because he's tired. He's sitting down because he has completed the work. The, 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 the sacrifice needed for your healing has been fully paid for, has been completed, my friend. And very importantly, concerning the potency of the blood of Jesus, is that it must be activated by faith. This is where many of us miss it. We Yes, to be born again, you know, okay, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. My sins are forgiven me. And then, okay, I'm not a member of this church. Okay, I now start learning more. People just leave it at that junction. No, the thing is that your sins are actually forgiven. So when sickness comes, you will tell, you will remind the sickness that, hold on a second, there must be a sin you are holding on to. If you check on yourself and repent of you, now enforce that thing that there can never be an anchor that you are holding on to because Jesus has fully paid for my sin. The blood of Jesus has paid. And if you stand on that, victory is guaranteed. How do we now engage this victory? This is healing school, my friend. I want you to be free of every oppression. The blood of Jesus Christ has fully paid for all your sins. And it is this foundation that you can enforce your divine healing. How do we enforce it? Number one, you must believe the word. What is this word? Colossians 1.14, that in Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. Number two, you must receive it as your own. Many people believe the word, yeah? Yeah, it's written in the Bible by the stripe of Jesus, we are made it, but... Is it really real? People ask me, is it real? Because they don't believe it, it belongs to them. Because, yeah, how come it's not working? That pastor just died of cancer. That deacon just died of that, you know, incurable disease. That person just died of COVID-19. How come complications? How come you must receive the word as yours for it to work for you? And then you must speak it forth. You must speak the word forth. That is something the Bible says. We just read that place in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. The Bible says that, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe. And therefore I speak. We also believe and therefore we speak. If you are operating in the spirit of faith, you don't only believe the word, you must speak it forth. Now, many people don't say it. There was someone I was counseling one time. I said, go and enforce forgiveness of sins. Ah, how many times will I say it? I say, as long as that oppression is facing you, that thing that is saying that you, des you, you must die. He is holding on to something, an anchor in your life. Face that anchor and say, my sins are forgiven me. Like my testimony I shared with you earlier, this, mon this monster oppression came to me. It was as if it will not bow. I try everything I know as a minister. It's not budging. I started to pray in the spirit that God will be away. And then Holy Spirit said, why not engage your foundation? I said, what is my foundation? He now faced me. He said, what is your foundation? I was thinking, is it the idolatry in my father's house? Is it the witchcraft in my mother's house? I was thinking, he said, what is your foundation? And I said, okay, 
<laughs> my sins are forgiven me. That's my foundation. I'm a new creature in Christ. That's my foundation. Jesus is my substitute, my sacrifice, my inheritor. That's my foundation. I say, encash it. And I began to face that monster. I began to face that oppression that my sins are forgiven me. I am a new creature. I, I, I only use that one. I say I have redemption through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of my sin. Ah, the blood of Jesus has forgiven me all my sin. Whatever you are holding on to you, this oppression, Jesus has forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. I started to face it. I understood tenacity in the work of faith. And that is what I'm sharing with you. That you must not just say it once, you must stay on it. I say the blood of Jesus has been fully paid for me. The blood of Jesus has been fully paid for me. I started to speak it for. Before you know it, because that's the highest sacrifice possible, it paid for. Is somebody blessed today? It said we have received the sp same spirit of faith as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and we speak. So you must speak it for. And you must insist on this word in prayer. Say it in the morning, say it in the noon. My the blood has paid for my sin. You, this oppression, you are holding on to something in my life. The blood of Jesus has fully paid for my sin. You begin to say it again and again. And then, very importantly, you must take corresponding action. Not that you say the blood of Jesus has fully paid for me. The next moment, I say, you, somebody call you, how are you? Oh, this is my sickness. I don't know. I'm so tired of it. That is not a corresponding action to what you just pray. You must speak in line. You must act in line with what you are doing, what you have confessed. It is very important that many people miss it in that place. They have finished, you know, they have been, they, you, they've confessed it, but they just say, oh, I don't think I can make it. I, you know, I need to rest. Once you start talking like that, you are not taking corresponding action. I believe in medical intervention and to God be the glory for what it has, what is that done in the world. As you are engaging the medical intervention, begin to build your faith also for divine healing. And gradually, you will know that you won't even need the intervention because you will have been so healed. I pray for somebody today that today is your own divine visitation in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. What are we talking about? Are you blessed somebody today? This is healing school. And we are looking at engaging divine, your foundation for your divine healing. Don't die of that sickness, my friend. There is a foundation you have in Christ Jesus that can give you your divine healing. And this foundation, one of them is that your sins has forgiven you. By the blood of Jesus, Colossians 1, 14, that you have redemption through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of your sin. Speak this word forth today. Receive this word as your own. Begin to speak it forth every day. There is an anchor that the sickness is holding on to in your life. An anchor of sickness, an anchor of unbelief, an anchor of disobedience, an anchor of ignorance. Face it with the blood of Jesus. That I have redemption through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of my sin. As you insist on this, you don't just say it once, you speak it forth. You believe it's your own. You speak it forth. You insist on it. You insist on it. That my sins are forgiven me by the blood of Jesus Christ. You, you stand on it before you know it. The sickness we bow. I pray for you today that this oppression in your life, I break the anchor the enemy is holding on to, that receive your forgiveness of sin by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I say, be made whole of that oppression now in the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Are you ready, somebody? The Bible says, our anchor scripture for the year. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that end on a moment. Is our anchor for the, the, the Lord said there is a divine, the, the Spirit of God told us that there is an anchor. There, there is an empowerment for you in 2022. To be everything God has called you to be, to have everything God has high marked for you to have, like the sound health we are looking at. Divine healing we are looking out. And to do everything God has set up for you. Now it is your responsibility to engage this. Are you ready? We are going to start to pray right now. 
I want you to open your mouth and lay hold on this foundation that you have in Christ Jesus. Don't die sheepishly of that sickness. It doesn't matter the name of the sickness. It doesn't matter the, what they call it. Don't die of that sickness. Open your mouth and say, I have redemption through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of my sin. I want you to say it vehemently. I want you to say it purposefully. I want you to say it with all fiber of your being that my sins are forgiven me. Stand on this word that my sins are forgiven me. Stand on this word that my sins are forgiven me. Insist that your sins are forgiven you. Don't take a no for an answer. This thing that this sickness is holding on to in your life has been paid for by the blood of Jesus. It's a complete work. Insist that the blood of Jesus has fully paid for your sin. Insist that the blood of Jesus has fully paid for your sin. Somebody begin to pray. Open your mouth with me and begin to pray, somebody. Raga da ba soto ba shekere ba 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 dia. Man tere boko ba ba shekere ba ba ba. It is time for your prayer. Open your mouth because God is visiting you today. Open your mouth, my friend, because God is visiting you today. Megeda e mangare ba e mangare ba 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 shekere ba soto maga kabo skata. Today's your visitation. Today's your divine visitation. Today's your divine visitation. Today's so this your divine visitation declare with me that your your sins are forgiven you it is a foundation that jesus has made possible for you open your mouth and say my sins are forgiven me oh my friend my sins are forgiven me oh my brother my sins are forgiven me insist insist on that confess of your sin and take a change that your sins are forgiven you. Your sins are forgiven you. My sins are forgiven me. Magada. E mangere bo shekere ba ba ba. Magada ba ba soto ba 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 ba. Libo sheketa. The anointing for healing is upon this medium. That oppression is being broken up in your life. That sickness is broken up in your life. Open your mouth and say your sin. My sins are forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. Because that is the reality. If you don't enforce it here. When you die, when you get to heaven, you will just discover that you didn't need to go too early. You will just discover that, where did I come too early? My sins are forgiven me. Jesus Christ, your spirit of God told me that, engage your foundation. Take a no, don't take a no for an answer. I began to face that monster. I said, my sins are forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. My sins are forgiven. That's one I know for sure is my foundation. Your foundation is not that you're witchcrafting your house, that you're idolatry your heart. That is not your foundation. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, you have a new foundation. Your sins are forgiven you. And as you begin to engage this foundation, things begin to turn around for you. Open your mouth and declare, my sins are forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. We pray for your healing today. Receive your breakthrough today. Your sins are forgiven you. Your sins are forgiven you. I have redemption through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of my sin. So shall it be. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, we have prayed. By faith, I lay hand on you today. I speak healing into your hands today. By faith, I proclaim upon you today that your sins are forgiven you. By faith, I decree to you today that the hand of God has rested upon you for good. By faith, I proclaim upon your life, my friend, that your sins are forgiven you. Receive your divine visitation. Receive your open door today. Open your mouth with me that I'm free. I have redemption. I lay hand on you, my friend. I say be made whole. I lay hand on you, my friend. I say, be made whole. I lay hand on you, my friend. I say, be delivered. I lay hand on you, my friend. I say, be healed of that oppression. Somebody is being healed right now. Somebody has just been set free right now. Somebody has just been delivered right now. Open your mouth and say, my sins are forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare that my sins are forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. I want you to declare again that my sins are forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. So shall it be in the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. One more time, I want to say thank you for joining us for today's program. This is our healing school. I pray that you have been blessed with this meeting. You may want to listen to this message again to lay hold on this truth. Don't die of that sickness. Don't die of that oppression. 
don't my friend because in your foundation you can have something that you can use to enforce your divine healing please be there the world need you your family need you you, they, we need you more on this earth for this moment to enforce to judge the forces of darkness so don't go to heaven too early engage your foundation in christ jesus it's a new day for you you may want to even share it with somebody that you know it may be a blessing to please feel free to share it god bless you as we go today as our practice we enforce the blessings of god upon our life that he placed upon everybody's life when we were still in the lands of adam I want you to agree with me according to Genesis 1.28. Open your mouth and say, I'm fruitful. I multiply. I fill the earth. I subdue and I have dominion. I want you to say it with me again that I'm fruitful. I multiply. I fill the earth. I subdue and I have dominion. Say it one more time that I'm fruitful. I multiply. I fill the earth. I subdue and I have dominion. That's your portion in Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's empowering 2022. Till we meet again, be healed of every oppression because your sins are forgiven you by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Pastor Tomorrow, I decree and declare that Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. Thank you, y'all, and God bless you. Shalom. This is The Church in the Air, a church without wall and border, setting men up with God for a glorious turnaround.